It's the start of fall. Time for one creature to get busy. The squirrel. Squirrels don't hibernate, so they need to find, then hide, nuts to feed themselves through the cold winter. Incredibly, a single squirrel can bury up to 10,000 nuts each year. With no squirrel GPS and no X's to mark the spot, locating all these nuts again months later seems an impossible task. How do squirrels find their nuts? Squirrels can be found everywhere from deserts to tropical rainforests and in woods across America. At the University of California, Berkeley, biologist and squirrel expert Dr. Amanda Robin is more interested in what squirrels do before hiding their food. She's taking her fancy squirrel test into the campus forest to find out how they choose their nuts and how they hide thousands of them in a way they can find months later. Hazelnuts and peanuts will lure the squirrels towards remote cameras, allowing Robin an up-close view of their incredible nut-burying behaviour. And it doesn't take long for our nut lure to be sniffed out by our first bushy-tailed visitor. But it doesn't grab and go. First, the nut is put through squirrel quality control. A quick sniff checks if it's rotten, then a close-up inspection. So they're going to turn it in their paws and they're checking for holes and cracks. A cracked shell means it will rot in the ground. No good for burying. Finally, the shake test. It's confirming that there is actually a seed in that pod and getting a rough estimated weight of that item. Once they find a perfect nut, how do they choose a perfect hiding place? Most squirrels are scatter hoarders. They hide their nuts over vast areas up to seven acres wide. That's bigger than five football fields. It's a huge area to find those nuts. And even though their sense of smell is as good as dogs, surprisingly, they don't just simply sniff the nuts out. Squirrels are actually using a lot more memory than smell when finding their own buried nuts. Remembering the locations of up to 10,000 nuts? I couldn't even remember where my car keys were this morning. So how do they do it? It turns out they use a kind of memory map. Imagine you're trying to come up with a great lunch spot in Manhattan. It could be the best pizza is by Times Square. And the tastiest Mexican might be a block past the grocery store on the right. We use landmarks to help us find our way. Well, squirrels do the same. They're actually remembering where they are and building spatial maps that include landmarks of things around them. Like on top of that tree stump, beside that bush, or under that park bench. So squirrels do have a kind of nut GPS. It's just in their heads. Next, they use an ingenious organizational strategy. Squirrels choose where to bury their nuts by what type of nut it is. They might put all of their hazelnuts in one place and all of their peanuts in another place as a way to help them remember where those things are. It's a bit like New York has Chinatown. Go there and you'll know there's Lo Mein. Go to Little Italy and you'll get great pasta. In the squirrel world, it's Hazelnutville and Peanutburg. Using their memory and mapping techniques, these furry masterminds have a phenomenal 90% success rate recovering nuts. It turns out squirrels really are nature's nutty professors. Space, the final frontier. 
and the deadliest. A human would last only a couple of minutes without a spacesuit before suffocating and freezing to death. In fact, no earthly animal can survive these lethal conditions for long. Well, except one creature. It's the size of a grain of sand, and it's called the tardigrade. How does a bug survive in space? Three, two, one. In 2007, the European Space Agency Photon M3 mission rocketed thousands of tiny tardigrades into space. These eight-legged and strangely cute micro-animals are nicknamed water bears because they usually live in water and, if you really squint, they look a bit like minuscule bears. In their spaceship, far, far away from their home, these tiny astronauts were exposed to the vacuum of space. When they returned to Earth, to everyone's surprise, nearly all of them were still alive. But how? Turns out they survived by going into a unique form of suspended animation. In the dryness of space, their body's water evaporates, but the tardigrade replaces it with a protein. It then shuts down everything except vital processes to keep it just alive. In this state, it doesn't move or breathe, and that means it doesn't need heat or oxygen. So the things in space that almost instantly kill us and all other animals don't harm them. The only thing that can hurt the tardigrades in space is solar radiation that slowly cooks them. Away from a star, it's possible they could live for decades. 